uh, welcome back everyone to uh, to lecture 5.4 and we are really gonna go into synthetic homotopy theory now um, defining homotopy groups of types and some uh, of the most basic uh, properties of those uh, so let's jump right in what is a homotopy group remember um, that we define the type of point of types is to be the type of types equipped with a point. <clears throat> so that's this uh, sigma type, I write it like u star now. And, uh, and the loop space is an operation on the type of pointed types. So if I have a pointed type, I can look at the loops at that base point and the base point of the loop space will be raffle. And uh, when I write it like this, I can iterate it and um, say, uh, loop space, um, the zero loop space is just the space itself, and the k plus first loop space is the loop space of the k loop space. And if I have these definitions, then I can define the k homotopy group to be the zero truncation of the k loop space of x at the base point x. Um, and the zero truncation is important here because. Uh, because the case loop space isn't always going to be a set. And if um, I hope that someone said this week that um, to be a group, you must be a set. Um, like there's higher group theory too, but that's not what um, homotopy groups are um, about, not these, these ones at least. Um, so we truncate, and um, uh, because we're going to use truncation a lot this lecture, I'm going to recall. Uh, what the set truncation is. Uh, for any type X, we have a set truncation. We write it like with this double bars and a zero. Um, and it comes equipped with the map eta from X into this uh, set truncation. And this eta is like the unit of an adjunction. The adjunction is shown here in the universal property. So to map out of the set truncation of X into a set Y, so the universal property only works with respect to sets. It's just equivalent to map out of X into Y. What this means <clears throat> is that um, if I start with a map uh, from X to Y, and I know that it goes into a set, then I know that there is a unique map from the set truncation of X into Y, uh, such that by this map, it maps back to what I started with. And that means that some triangle commutes. So uh, for any F, there is a unique G, the map is precomposition, so that if I precompose it with eta, then I get f back. That means that this triangle commutes. So this is the universal property of the set truncation, and it satisfies very similarly also a dependent universal property where this y is not uh, just a type, but it's a family of sets over the set truncation. And then here will be so if that will be p of x, and it will be here p of eta x, and that will still be an equivalent. So that's just to recall the set truncation. And, uh, and we said that these pi k's are, uh, are groups, at least for k at least one, because for a zero is just a set. Uh, let's show that. And we're going to use um, the universal property. First, we define the unit of the group. Um, for uh, k at least one, it's a loop space, so we have raffle. And uh, um, it was truncated, so you have to use eta to make a type check. So this is the unit of the group. And the group multiplication um, is, is a map of this type uh, from, um, from the k plus first homotopy group to, the, uh, to this one. Um, <clears throat> and notice that all the types involved here are sets. So we can uh, use the universal property of the set truncation to define this map. So we only have to define it on, uh, on elements of the form eta p and eta q. And what do we do with uh, eta p and eta q? We take eta p concatenate q, and that is the operation. So the operation is induced by the uh, concatenation operation uh, from the identity type. And there is also an inverse, of course. And uh, we need to verify the group law. So, for example, if I have a loop, then um, how do you show that one uh, one times uh, omega is omega? 
Well, uh, again, uh, it's by the um, by the induction for set truncation. You only have to do it when omega is um, is of the form eta p. And when it's of the form eta p, then uh, then I look here how it was defined. This was uh, raffle on the left side, and on the right side you have the p. Then it will be here raffle concatenate with p, but that's of course just p, and uh, and that proof just goes true. But this is. Um, this is how you get the homotopy groups, this um, uh, thing. And then there is something very special for uh, k at least two. Turns out that all these homotopy groups are going to be abelian. So that's what these next few slides are about. Um, to show that it's going to be abelian, I'm going to introduce a second uh, concatenation operation on, on pads. That uh, acts on on the uh, on the higher pads, not on the parts of level one, but two and up. There is a there is one more operation, and to get this, I need the binary uh, action on pads of uh, binary operation F, and I need the most general form I can come up with. So the binary operation takes an element from a type A, an element from a different type B, and returns uh, an element in uh, yet a different type C. So this is a binary operation, <clears throat> and and of course it's a congruence because any uh, operation in type theory is a congruence. It preserves identifications. So if I have x equals x prime in A, if I have y equals y prime in B, then just by pet induction on this pet and on that pet, I get that f of x y is the same thing as f of x prime y prime. Um, that's how you get it. Oops. Um, and now we can use this uh, to define an operation that uh, uh, takes a path from p to p prime and a path from q to q prime. So this is in the second identity type and combines them into a single path from p compose or p concat uh, q to p prime concat q prime. And uh, this is exactly the binary action on paths of. Um, of the ordinary uh, concatenation operation. Uh, so it's like a nice way to, to get that. <clears throat> um, and uh, the good uh, thing about this operation is that it satisfies an interchange law. And this interchange law is gonna get us into the Ekman-Hilton argument. And the interchange law says, okay, if I have this situation, S and T and U and V like that, then I can concatenate S and T in the ordinary way, and I can concatenate U and V in the ordinary way, and then I can uh, com I concatenate those two in the new way, and I get a new path from P concat Q to P prime prime to con uh, concat Q prime prime. That's uh, this uh, side of the equation, but <clears throat> I can also combine S with U, and I can combine T with V. And uh, then I get uh, a path from P Q to P prime Q prime, and one from P prime Q prime to P prime prime Q prime prime. <clears throat> and, uh, and those can be uh, combined in the usual way. So that's this. And the claim is those two things are equal. <clears throat> and how do you prove that? It is very, very simple. Um, S, T, U, and V, they are all three pets. You can just induct on pet or pattern match on all of them. Then they will all be raffle, and there's nothing to do with this raffle. So this line here with million raffles is the answer. <clears throat> this is uh, when pet induction is really the nicest ever. It's just raffle all the time. Um, and now uh, we can use this to give the ekman hilton argument to prove that the uh, how much P groups from uh, level two onwards are abelian. So first, um, we have to get out of the set truncation because this is a set truncated type. So it suffices to uh, do this for elements of the form eta s and eta t. So we have to uh, prove this. Um, but remember, this one is defined to be eta of s concat t. And this one is eta of t concat s, so it suffices to show 
um, s concat t is t concat s. And here is the calculation. You start on the left hand side. <clears throat> And you notice that uh, the new uh, concatenation operation that uh, I just introduced satisfies uh, two unit laws because it's just defined by raffle. I mean, if this one is raffle, then it's true, so it's always true. <clears throat> uh, so we can use those unit laws to rewrite it, and there's not that much going on, but this brings us in the situation where we can apply the interchange. And we do, we do apply interchange. Then uh, the S stays here, this raffle goes to the other side, this raffle goes to that side, and T stays in the same place. Nothing much happened except that the composition uh, changed. And now we get S with the new composition T. <clears throat> uh, all of that for not very much, but we continue the calculation. And uh, now in this expression, we are using unit loss, but for the ordinary concatenation and in the other way. Uh, so we put raffle on this side, we put raffle on that side, and then we are again in a situation where we can um, use the interchange law. Now S goes here, T goes there, this raffle stays fixed, that raffle stays fixed. And uh, this is good because now you see that um, uh, uh, T and S are swapped in places. We apply unit loss and finish the proof. Anya has a question. When we write etas, do we somehow forget about the point of the point attack? Oh, um, so the eta is applied to elements of the pointed type X. So when I speak of elements of a pointed type, then it will be elements of the underlying type of the pointed type. You don't forget really about the point. But, um, yeah, it's just the underlying part. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so now, now we know that uh, uh, pi of k plus two is always abelian. And the last uh, very important uh, piece of theory about um, about homotopy groups is the long exact sequence. Uh, I should have displayed it. Um, so first let's discuss the notion of exactness. How do you formulate it in type theory? <clears throat> we um, have some set level uh, structures here. We can just forget all the structure and it's just sets X, Y, and Z. There are pointed sets. And we say that such a short sequence of composable maps is exact at Y, at the thing in the middle. If, um, well, there are pointed sets, so I can uh, look at the uh, base point of Z and look at the fiber of G. That's like taking the kernel of G. Like that's some subtype of Y. Um, so I can look at, um, at the predicates uh, G of Y equals C naught. <clears throat> or I can look for any Y at the predicate. There is an X in X such that F maps X to Y. <clears throat> And uh, that's like the image of F. So it's exact um, precisely when uh, the image of F is the kernel of G, or um, uh, the way we say what is the fiber of G, because here they are just maps. But if they if they will be groups, then that's exactly going to be the kernel. <clears throat> um, so this is exactness, and. Uh, to prove um, the long, uh, construct the long exact sequence, we need to know something about uh, about the identity type of the set truncation, and we not need to know that um, the uh, identity type eta x equals eta y that this is equivalent to the propositional truncation of x equals y, and uh, this um, this equivalence. Uh, allows us to think of the set truncation as a quotient. X modulo the equivalence relation uh, propositionally truncated X equals Y. <clears throat> and this intuition is, is, is correct. This is, um, this is a good way of thinking about the set truncation. It's X modulo that, um, that equivalence relation. And even, um, even for the higher uh, truncation, this idea works. Uh, so the n plus first truncation, the identity types will be uh, n truncated identity types. But here we are just doing the simple case. 
Um, uh, so um, the proof is by the encode decode method again. So always when you're uh, identifying an identity type, always by the encode decode method. So here's not different. You let x in x. Um, now we uh, we want to use the universal property of x not to define a map into the type of all propositions. So this is a predicate on uh, on the set truncation, and it's the unique extension of um, of uh, of our equivalence relation here, but just with x fixed. <clears throat> so that's a map from x to the type of propositions, and there and because um, because this has the universal property of the set truncation, we have an extension. <clears throat> That's the unique family um, with, uh, with those equivalences. That's our encoding. And we should show that the type of um, uh, the total space of C is contractible. And I'm going to uh, skip that proof. But uh, the proof is here. So if you want to look it up, then um, then you can find it in my slides, the, the short version at least. Um, but let's let's uh, go on because we want to get to the um, long exact sequence. <clears throat> uh, so recall that the fiber sequence has an F, an E, and a B of pointed types, so there are not sets here. Um, is uh, are those maps of pointed? Uh, well, sorry. There are pointed maps that fit in a pullback square like that. And what that means is that the fiber of this map from E to B is really that F up to equivalence. And uh, if you have such a fiber sequence, uh, then something nice happens when you truncate it. Uh, when you truncate it, then it becomes exact at E naught. So this is like infinity exact, and this is like set level exact. Oops. Um, and that is uh, very good. And this is something, again, we should prove. But once we have done this, we're basically done for the long exact sequence. This is really the heart of, of that construction. So, um, OK, so we have to prove exactness. Then we have to prove an equivalence, namely that the, Im the image of f was the kernel of, um, of g. Uh, but now the f, uh, the f was, is this map. Uh, the set uh, the set truncation of i, so that's like the functoriality of the set truncation I'm using here, and uh, the g is now the um, set truncation of p. So I have to prove that, <clears throat> and uh, notice that uh, that this is a proposition for any y in uh, in the set truncation of e naught. So we, uh, it suffices to show this for y of the form eta y, for y in, in e, by the universal property of e again. So we're going to put etas everywhere, here and there. Um, and that's what this formula here is. And, uh, and then you notice that, uh, OK, so this functorial action of p x on eta y is just eta of um, of p of y. Oh, that's written here. That's good. Um, and then we have eta of something equals eta of something. We can use our lemma uh, that says, ah, that is, a, that is a propositional truncation. So that's why this simplifies here. And now it is really easy to go back from, from right to left. Uh, OK, this is a proposition. So we can use the universal property of the propositional truncation to get rid of these truncations. and uh, and now this B not can is free in um, in B, so we can use path induction, and we only have to do it for. Um, uh, sorry, I get lost a little bit. Um, there's nothing really to show. Well, so I'm blanking a little bit, but this this direction is just by path induction. <clears throat> um, the other direction is a bit more interesting. Um, so here we have to uh, go from this sigma type to there. We again notice that this is a proposition. So we can use the universal property. So we can assume an x in f naught, it's set truncated f naught and a path like that. 
Um, but now this X here is in the set truncation and we're proving a proposition. So again, we can use, uh, we can eliminate that set truncation and just assume X is an F. And then we have eta uh, X here. So this, this uh, value will be eta of I, uh, I of X. And um, uh, that's what's written here. And then we have said, uh, then we have this uh, equation from an eta to an eta, that's just a propositional truncation. Um, that's uh, that's one, one of our assumptions then. <clears throat> and again, we proceed just by, uh, by eliminating this last propositional truncation um, and by path induction. And this, uh, this will then become trivial. <clears throat> okay. So just everything comes out nicely. Uh, it's because the um, the maps I and P are required to preserve the base points that's, that will be used. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> now we're almost done with the long XX sequence. So suppose we have a fiber sequence um, F uh, into E into B. So we have a pullback square like that. Then, um, well, E has a point, so I can look at a map from one into E and pull back that. But by the two pullbacks lemma, um, it follows that the outer um, rectangle will be a pullback square, but that's exactly gonna be the loop space of B. Uh, so if I step like that, I get the loop space of B here. And I can continue stepping because all my types are pointed. And here, um, this square is a pullback, that square is a pullback, so the rectangle is a pullback, and that means that uh, this pullback must be the loop space of E because that's this, uh, this shape of things. I can do it once more. I get that this is a pullback, that's a pullback, so the rectangle is a pullback with F here, once there, so that's loop space of F, and so on. This goes on forever. So this becomes a big letter. And, um, and here I have this long sequence of, uh, of maps that are exact at every point. Uh, so I can hit that with my um, with my uh, lemma that I just had about the uh, set truncation. This one, this sequence is exact at every point, like starting from this e. <clears throat> so if I hit it with the set truncation, then I get first of all my homotopy groups, and second of all, uh, it is exact in the uh, in the sense that I um, I showed you. Uh, so this is how you construct the long exact sequence. And there's a corollary is, uh, is that it follows that the homotopy groups of S3 are the same as the homotopy groups of S2 when K is large enough, K is larger than three. <clears throat> and to show this, we use the hot vibration. This is a fiber sequence. And remember the long exact sequence applies to fiber sequences. So we uh, do the long exact sequence here. Um, I get uh, this exact sequence of homotopy groups and uh, it started with pi net as a, uh, S1, pi one of S1, we know it's C, but we know that uh, S1 is, uh, uh, is a one type because its loop space is Z. It's, uh, it doesn't have any higher structure. So pi K of S1 is zero for, is trivial for, uh, k bigger than two. And that means that we have exact, uh, in, in this long exact sequence, we will see this pattern the whole time for k at least two. And uh, sorry, k here is at least three. So there is one <clears throat> difference here. Um, but that means that um, just by some standard theory of exact sequences about which I also have an exercise that this is a group isomorphism for all k at least three. Yeah, so that's uh, that is this talk. Um, some exercises is um, yeah. So if I have uh, a group homomorphism that fits in an exact sequence like that, then it's an isomorphism. Um, if X is n truncated, then you can show that the homotopy groups of X are trivial, so zero or contractible. Um, at, uh, for uh, I are uh, strictly bigger than n. And the dual property is when the uh, homotopy groups below a certain value of n are trivial. And that is when um, you have to show that that happens when the n truncation of 
x is contractible, so you have to know what the truncation is. <clears throat> and that's it. Let's have a five-minute break and uh, 